father has three sons. There's Jack, a quiet, intelligent student. Then there's Jason, a popular athlete. So who's the third son? It's John. His father has three sons, Jack, Jason, and him, John. One day, a teacher decided to give her students a test, but all of them refused to take it. She could give detention for skipping the test to only one student. All of them knew each other's names. If a student knew they were going to get a detention, they agreed to take the test. How could the teacher make all the students participate? She told them that she'd give detention to the student whose name came first alphabetically. Then this person wouldn't skip the test. The next person on the list wouldn't skip as well. And so on until the end of the list. Randy was at home, sitting in his chair with a book. Suddenly, his sister's super expensive vase fell and broke in the living room. He ran there in time to see a stranger jump out of the window and run away. Randy tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold, so he couldn't see the person. When the police arrived, they immediately knew he was lying. He'd broken the vase himself. How did they know? Glasses don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Michael Winston, who dislikes modern art, rushed into the city gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet, the manager of the gallery thanked Mr. Winston for his actions. How come? Michael was a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more exhibits. Look at this line of people at the checkout in a supermarket. They're all a colorful bunch, but one of them is trying to sneak out food out of the store. Can you tell who just by looking at them closely? You might have thought it was the pregnant woman because of the fake tummy, but look! She's wearing comfy sneakers without shoelaces so that she could slip them on easily. The guy in a baggy hoodie sure looks suspicious, but it's not food he's hiding inside his pockets. It's a kitten. And the real culprit is the guy behind him. Look at his sleeves. One of his arms looks way bigger than the other. He must be hiding something in there. A man dressed in black from head to toe was walking in the middle of the road. All of a sudden, a huge black car with its headlights off came around the corner and screeched to a halt, not to hit him. How on earth did the driver of the car see the man in black? Well, the only reasonable answer would be that it was in broad daylight. Nobody said it was nighttime after all. Three college friends met after a summer break and were sharing stories about their vacation. Lily described how she and her boyfriend had gone to Paris and seen the city from the top of the Eiffel Tower. Dylan told his friends that he had traveled to Africa with his parents. But on their last day, there was a massive volcanic eruption and it didn't spoil their vacation only because they flew home that day. And Ellie said that she had visited her uncle in Texas and learned how to ride a horse. One of the stories was fake though. Which one? Dylan's story is fake. He couldn't fly home on the day of the eruption because when something like this happens, all flights get canceled. Mark and Amy got stranded on a tiny uninhabited island full of sand and rocks, but not much else. They had no radio or cell phones, and there were no trees on the island to make a smoke signal. Suddenly, Amy noticed a plane circling the sky in search of them. She got a bright idea to make it notice them. Soon after, the plane picked them up. What was Amy's idea?
she suggested using rocks to spell out SOS on the sand. Mike was studying for a big test in the school library. It was already late when he finished up and suddenly heard someone shouting for help. The voice was coming from behind a locked classroom door. Mike rushed there and opened it. Inside, there was his classmate, Brad. He told Mike that he'd gone to grab a bite in the cafeteria, only to find it was closed that day. Suddenly, he blacked out. And the next thing he knew, he was locked in the classroom. Mike promised to find out who had done this. By morning, Mike had four suspects in mind. When school started, he interrogated them. Matthew told him he'd been doing his homework in a classroom. Emily said that she'd been with Matthew, but later she'd gone home. Olivia claimed that she'd been having lunch in the cafeteria, and Chris explained that he'd been sick that day. It took Mike no time to figure out who was guilty. It was Olivia. She couldn't have been eating lunch in the cafeteria because it was closed that day. Clara was in her hotel room when she heard someone knock on the door. She looked through the peephole and saw an unfamiliar man. He said, Hi, I'm the hotel manager. Sorry to bother you, but our database has crashed. Could you let me in to confirm some information? Clara immediately rushed to her phone and called hotel security. Can you figure out why? The badge on the man's chest says Chloe Smith, and that's a female name. She knew the man was a fake manager. Emma's mother asked the girl to go to the supermarket and gave her a shopping list and a bank card. But in case Emma forgot the card's pin, her mom also gave her a little clue. When Emma was already at the checkout, she took the clue out of her pocket and immediately recalled the code. Can you say what number it was if the clue was a sheet of paper with a fly, a cat, a girl, and a snake drawn on it? The pin was 6420. Emma just had to count the number of legs of each creature. Littlefield was a tiny village where nothing ever happened. But one day, Mr. Richardson, a rich farmer, arrived at the police station in tears, saying that two of his best cows were missing. There were three suspects, and each of them had to answer one question. Have you taken your neighbor's animals? Mr. Anderson said that he and Mr. Richardson had a common business and that he wouldn't risk their partnership. Mrs. Martinez stated that she'd been living in this village since birth and she wouldn't spoil her reputation because of some animals. And Mr. Jones explained that his family had been breeding pigs for centuries and he didn't have any reason to steal cows. The police officer figured out who the criminal was. Can you? The thief is Mr. Jones. How did he know that it was cows that were stolen? Nobody had told him the animal species. A woman was having breakfast at a nice restaurant. At one moment, she noticed a fly in her coffee. She was indignant and made the waiter bring her another cup. After he returned with a new cup of coffee, she shouted, What's with this service in this place? You've just brought me the same cup of coffee. How did she understand it? She had already put sugar in her previous cup of coffee. When she tried the new one, it was sweet. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and see that it's more than half full. But your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches its rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. Carl and his wife Olivia had dinner. They ate the same dishes. 
french fries, some fish, and vegetable salad. Half an hour later, Carl felt unwell and called the ambulance. But when specialists arrived, he was already unconscious. The man was immediately taken to a hospital. Luckily, doctors had enough time to save him. When they figured out what was wrong with Carl, everyone was shocked. The man had been poisoned. But how could it happen? He and his wife ate the same dishes, but Olivia was perfectly fine. Even more surprising, the next day, the police arrested the woman for trying to poison her husband. How come? Olivia made all the dishes not salty enough and put poison in the salt shaker. Peter graduated from the police academy and began to work as a trainee detective. One week after the guy started his new job, he already had the first tricky case on his hands. One of his colleagues was investigating a series of crimes connected with smuggling. She was close to solving the case, but several days ago, the woman disappeared. Peter visited the last location where his colleague was spotted and found a note. 710-57735-34-5508-517718. Peter has three suspects. Bill, a manager in an oil company. Todd, a jeweler. And John, a car dealer. Who's the criminal? Peter has managed to prove he deserves his detective badge. The guy turned the message upside down and tried to read it that way. Surprisingly, the letters made rather legible words. Bill is boss. He sells oil. Something went wrong in a super secret laboratory. There was a leak of a newly developed experimental chemical, and it made several plants and animals mutate in the blink of an eye. Scientists ended up locked in one room with the vicious monsters. One of the researchers managed to figure out how they could get out of this dire situation. But the substance they needed was in another part of the laboratory. The scientists could get there through one of three corridors. The first was guarded by fire-breathing crocodiles. Hey, it was an experimental laboratory after all. The second corridor was filled with meat-eating sunflowers with extra sharp teeth. And the third passage was swarming with venomous bees. Which one should the scientists choose? They should opt for the corridor with the sunflowers. Those are plants, and however scary they are, they can't move. Terry and Alice fell in love and started going out, but the woman's best friend Sarah was jealous of their relationship. Alice didn't want to lose her friendship and tried to keep the dates with her boyfriend in secret. That's why she left him coded messages with the places where they were going to meet. That day, Terry found a new note. It looked like this. At first, he was puzzled, but soon enough, he realized where he was going to see Alice. Can you figure it out? Alice told Terry to meet her at the street corner. Patrick called the police. The man seemed to be worried sick. My wife Victoria took our dog for a walk in the afternoon. Several hours ago, our pooch returned alone. I don't know where Vicky is. The police questioned the suspects. Mrs. Summers said she'd been watching TV all day long. I was busy delivering the mail, said the postman. I didn't have time to linger in this area, and I didn't see anything. And Mr. Thomas told the police he'd been working in his home office. The detective knew at once one of these people was lying. Who was it? It was the postman. His sleeve is a bit torn, and there's a dog bite on his arm. Plus, some black fur is stuck to his pants. Victoria's dog probably tried to protect the woman. Three expensive watches have been stolen from Mr. Brown's store this year. Uh -oh. The police can't help the poor man. He decides to hire a private detective. 
When Laura arrives, she immediately asks for the CCTV footage from January to December. After watching it, she tells the store owner who the thief is. What has she noticed in the video? The same guy came to the store several times, in April, August, and November. And every time, he has a cast on his arm. But no broken bone would need eight months to heal. Joe had a friend, Randy, who never answered questions directly. Once, Joe sent Randy a message, inviting him to join their common friends in a cafe. Randy's answer was kind of weird. Sorry, no money. Job in job. Luckily, Joe knew his friend well enough to understand what he meant. But can you figure it out? Randy meant he had no money because he was in between jobs. The next time Joe texted Randy was when he needed some advice. Despite all his quirks, his friend was very good at finding solutions to difficult situations. So Joe wrote, My girlfriend took my professional camera without asking permission, and then she accidentally smashed it. What should I do? The answer was bizarre. Not that it was unexpected. Give get, give get, give get, give get. At first, Joe didn't think he wanted to follow this advice. But a bit later, he decided it was the best course of action. What was the advice? Forgive and forget. Dylan was an extremely popular guy in his office. Tall, handsome, funny, and friendly. But there was one thing that made certain people dislike him. The man had a new girlfriend every month. That Friday, Dylan came to work happier than he'd ever felt. He finally bought the car of his dreams. At lunchtime, he went to the parking lot to check in on his new toy. Oh no, his car was a mess scratched and covered in paint. Dylan went pale and called security. He had three suspects, all of them his exes. Andrea said she didn't even know Dylan had got a new car. Catherine answered she'd been preparing a report for their boss and hadn't left her desk. And Mila told the guy she'd forgiven him long ago. Who ruined Dylan's car? It was Catherine. She had some smeared paint on her skirt, and the color is the same as the paint on the man's car. Two maids work in a small hotel in the mountains. One day, the hotel owner finds out one of them regularly steals stuff from guests, but he doesn't know which one it is. Look at these maids cleaning the rooms. Can you help the owner understand who's guilty? The maid on the right hasn't noticed the ring under the sofa. She might not be a great cleaner, but also not a thief. As for the maid on the left, she's spotted the ring and put it in her bucket. It means she's going to take it for herself after she finishes cleaning. She's the one who steals things. One afternoon, all the money was stolen from the register of a small cafe on the beach. The police have five suspects, all of them claim they haven't been to the cafe in the past hour. Look at them closely and try to figure out who's the thief. It's the guy with the cocktail in his hand. He definitely bought it in the cafe. But then, why did he lie about not visiting the place? Police officer Cheryl Adams was visiting her colleagues in another town. She was walking along the river, taking pictures to send to her husband, when a man crashed into her. They both fell to the ground. After helping Cheryl to her feet, the man started to apologize. It turned out someone had stolen his wallet, and he was trying to catch the thief. I was painting my boat, and my wallet was lying next to me. But then I got distracted, just for a moment. But when I turned back, the wallet wasn't there anymore. Cheryl understood the thief couldn't have gone far. She pulled the man to the nearby pier. 
There were four people there. After looking at them closely, the police officer knew who the thief was. Now it's your turn to figure it out. It's the man who's talking on the phone. There's some green paint on his feet. Julia came to have lunch in her favorite restaurant. She occupied a table near the window and put her bag in the seat next to her. Once the woman gave her order to the waiter, she went to the bathroom to wash her hands. But when she returned to the table, her bag was open and her wallet was missing. The waiter told her he had noticed only one man passing by her table. He was short with a tattoo on his neck. He seemed to go out to the terrace. Julia rushed there and saw three people sitting at their tables. She looked at them closely and soon understood who'd taken her wallet. Who was the thief? It's the young woman on the right. You can see a wig and some men's clothing in her bag. Plus, she's wearing a turtleneck to cover her tattoo. So a restaurant owner called the police and said a customer had stolen a large sum of money. When the police arrived, the restaurant security guard already had three suspects. Thomas said, I was just walking along the street. I didn't even enter your restaurant. Dylan was angry. I've never been to this place before. I was sitting in my car when that guy ran up to me and started throwing accusations. John said, I did visit the restaurant yesterday, but I just came in to get a coffee and didn't stay longer than five minutes. After listening to the suspects, the police arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Dylan. His car was parked in the place reserved for regular clients, but he claimed he'd never been to the restaurant before. Harrison was walking home when someone threw a bag over his head and knocked the guy out. When he came around, he found himself in a room with four doors and a tiny window. Harrison opened the window, but it was too small for him to squeeze through. Suddenly, the guy spotted a piece of paper lying on the floor. It was a note that said, Only one door leads outside. The other three don't lead anywhere. You can try to open just one door, and only once. If you don't succeed, all of them will get locked forever. Harrison thought for a while and made the right choice. How did he figure it out? He opened the window. This created a draft. The guy checked the keyholes and felt some cool air coming from one of them. It was the door to freedom. It was Sunday morning when a submarine captain found one of his sailors lying unconscious on his bunk. Someone had hit him on the head. It could only be another crew member. The captain had three suspects, Mateo, David, and Owen. He questioned them, and that's what they said. Mateo, I couldn't do it. I was checking the equipment in the machinery compartment. David, when it happened, I was washing dishes left after dinner. Owen, at that moment, I was busy posting a new video on TikTok. Who was lying? It was Owen. People can't use the internet for personal purposes on submarines. Leo studied art in college and rented an apartment together with his friend Andrew. Leo had bad eyesight and was wearing his glasses at all times. One day, Andrew didn't notice Leo's glasses and accidentally sat on them. They were beyond repair. Leo was so furious, he shouted at his friend, and Andrew ran away. Leo called his girlfriend and asked her to give him a lift to the optician. He couldn't drive without his glasses. They were turning onto the main road when they spotted Andrew. He was lying in the bushes, unmoving. Leo immediately called the police and ambulance. Andrew was taken to a hospital, and a police officer started to question the witnesses. Leo told him, My girlfriend was behind the wheel when I spotted Andrew. We immediately stopped and called you. We didn't see anything suspicious. The police officer arrested Leo. Why?
with such poor eyesight and without glasses. How could he notice Andrew lying in the bushes? Lily called the police. She found her neighbor, a famous artist, on the floor of his apartment. The unconscious man was quickly rushed to a hospital. The police had three suspects. Lily said, I live next door. I heard some shouting and loud bangs. I went to check on what was going on and found him on the floor. Zachary told the police the artist was his friend. We agreed to meet at the restaurant, and I came to give him a lift. And Cooper said, I ordered a painting from him, but when I came to pick it up, I saw the police. Who's guilty? It's Zachary. If they agreed to meet at the restaurant, why did he come to the artist's apartment? You wake up locked in a room with no windows and just one automatic door. Above the door, there's a large screen. Suddenly, it turns on. You hear a voice. It sounds muffled. Crack this riddle and you're free to go. If not, the room will be filled with toxic gas in five minutes. After that, you see the riddle. What could it mean? Hopefully, you'll realize in time that it means sitting on top of the world. Look at these mirrors and say which one is magical. It's the one the girl in the middle is holding. Apparently, it helped her get rid of her mole. A businessman's about to go through a security check at the airport when he realizes someone's taken his luggage. Airport security officers have three suspects. Anna says she doesn't need someone's old bag. She has her own, thank you very much. Mike answers he's a light traveler and doesn't have luggage. He keeps everything in his backpack. James says he's been in a car accident recently. His arm's broken, and he has a sprained ankle. He can hardly carry anything. In no time, the security officers arrest the thief. Can you figure out who it is? It's Anna. Nobody told her the bag was old. Several police officers are following a criminal. He hid in a random house. When the officers entered the building, they saw a costume party was going on, and the criminal pretended to be one of the guests. The police looked at the people and soon figured out who the criminal was. How did they understand it? It's the man in the black cape. Unlike other partygoers, he seemed to throw on everything he had at hand. Iron Man's helmet, Batman's cape, and Hulk's pants. Two young women disappeared one by one in a small town. The police found an envelope with a strange code in the first girl's apartment. In the second woman's house, they discovered another envelope, this time with a weird table. It was empty, but several squares were darker than the rest. The detective suspects the girl who will vanish next might be Madeline, Melanie, or Ariana. Can you figure out which one it'll be? After studying the coat and the table, the detective realized it would be Madeline. One day, before a popular blogger conference, the security of the building where it was going to take place got a strange message. One of the bloggers is going to be kidnapped tomorrow. It'll either be Monica or Leslie. It was too late to cancel the whole thing. That's why the security officers decided to keep a close eye on the girls. During the event, the girls weren't talking to anyone suspicious. Everything and everyone looked perfectly normal. But suddenly, it became clear who was plotting against one of the girls. Can you figure it out? It was Monica. Look at that rope in her bag. She was going to get rid of her competitor. Aaron was preparing for his test for ages. 
He was sure his answers were correct and he'd get an A. But several days later, the teacher told the guy he wanted to talk to him. It turned out Aaron had made a tiny mistake and the professor couldn't give him the highest mark. But, the teacher said, if you manage to solve one riddle, I'll give you an A. Aaron wanted to have a good mark. Of course, he agreed. That's what his teacher showed him. After thinking for several minutes, Aaron answered and it was correct. What did he say? In Between Jobs Maria was walking home from work when she heard screaming. It was coming from the house she was passing by. The girl immediately ran in to help. She followed the voice, and it brought her to the basement. As soon as she walked in, the door slammed shut. Suddenly, three portals opened in front of her, but only one of them led to safety. The first portal was filled with giant poisonous snakes. In the second portal, there was a huge suspended rock. It would crash down the moment someone stepped in. In the third portal, five hungry crocodiles were waiting for Maria. Luckily, the girl chose the safe portal and managed to escape. Which portal was it? She picked the second one. Maria threw her shoes inside, waited for the massive stone to drop, and then walked away. Two men were playing chess. They'd already played five games, and each man had won three of them. How is it possible? The men were playing with different opponents, not with each other. Sarah and Liam had a son named Oliver. On Saturday, the couple went out for dinner and left Oliver at home. When they returned, the boy was nowhere to be found. The anxious parents called the police. A detective arrived and questioned everyone in the house. The babysitter said she'd been packing Oliver's school bag for the next day. The maid said she'd spent the whole evening cleaning the kitchen. And the cook said he had been preparing food for the next day. He was listening to music and didn't hear anything. The police immediately knew who was lying. And what about you? It was the babysitter. Children don't go to school on Sundays, so Oliver didn't need his school bag to be packed. So Charles found himself locked in a small room. He didn't know what had happened. Just then, he saw a door. He approached it and tried to open it, but it was locked. There were three buttons. On one button, there was a circle. On the second one, a triangle. On the third, a square. Charles didn't know which one would unlock the door. Luckily, though, there was a note. It said 12, 4, 8. Which button should he press to get out? You might have noticed that there's a clock right above the door. It's there for a reason. If you draw lines connecting 12, 4, and 8, you get a triangle. So Charles should press the button with the triangle on it. Esme was having a regular walk in the forest and got lost. She wandered around all night in the dark. Just after sunrise, she came upon a witch's house. She had nowhere else to go, so she walked in and asked the witch to send her home. The witch agreed, but it wasn't going to be that easy. Three magical doors appeared, and Esme had to decide which one to go through. Behind the first door, nothing but a deep pit. Behind the second door was a shower of toxic liquid. Behind the third door was an open space with a vampire waiting for her. Which way should Esme go? Well, it's already past sunrise. The vampire would be gone already, hiding out somewhere dark. Esme should pick the third door. Maybe Esme could have just jumped over the pit. What do you think? Take a look at these pictures. Which blogger is richer? The second one. Look at the number of likes. 
She has 17,000, but the first one only has 7,000. One of Mr. Smith's sons, Jaden, was taken. Several hours later, Mr. Smith and his younger son David received a letter. The letter stated that if they wanted to see Jaden again, they should round up a million dollars cash and take it to a little shack in the woods. Mr. Smith and David decided to do it, and David took the money into the woods alone. But it didn't go as planned. David said that halfway to the shack, someone approached him from behind, hit him, and stole the money. There was an investigation, and a detective asked David what the robber looked like. David said that he had dark hair and a red hoodie with a black logo on it. The detective immediately figured out who had taken Jaden. Can you? It was David. He said the robber approached him from behind. But somehow, he still managed to remember some pretty specific details about the robber. Nah, he made it all up. <laughs> Abigail wanted to buy her mom the best birthday present ever. The problem was, she had zero ideas. She decided to sneak into her mom's computer, go to her online shopping cart, and see what she had saved in there. When her mom left for work, Abigail sneaked into her home office and turned on the computer. Uh-oh, it required a password, and Abigail didn't know it. There was a sticky note attached to the keyboard. It was a clue. One apple, two apple, two orange, two kiwi, one lemon. Can you guess the password? Each number represents one letter of the word. A apple means the first letter, so A. Then we get P, R, I, and L. The password is April. Wow, her mom is really into fruit. A lady was shopping and left the store right after paying. A couple of minutes later, she returned. She had forgotten her wallet at the checkout counter. But the wallet was already gone. She called the police and reported the robbery. A detective interrogated the people who were in the store at the time. Sophia, the cashier, said she didn't see the wallet after the lady paid. Robert, a pilot who happened to be shopping there, said he didn't even see the wallet. He didn't have his glasses on. Mark, a landscaper, said he was in a different part of the store, so he didn't see anything. So, who stole the wallet? It was Robert, the pilot. He looks pretty blind without his glasses, so he's definitely not a pilot. Why would he lie about that? Unless… Amelia's brother, Neil, was a crazy scientist. In the past year, he had been working on a time machine. One day, he ran into Amelia's room and screamed. He'd done it! He'd invented a time machine, and it totally worked! He said he had already tested it. He managed to talk to William Shakespeare, Princess Diana, and Sherlock Holmes. Amelia didn't believe him at all. Why was she so sure about it? Even if Neil had actually invented a time machine, he'd only have been able to talk to people who actually existed in real life. He said he talked to Sherlock Holmes. That guy's a character from a book and a TV show and a movie. Hey, that guy's everywhere. A woman called the police and reported that she had been robbed. She said she was in a restaurant bathroom fixing her makeup. Someone had come up from behind and hit her on the head, so she didn't know what the person looked like. The police sent her home and refused to fill out the report. Why? The woman was fixing her makeup, so she must have been looking in the mirror. She would have definitely seen someone sneaking up behind her. She lied and made up the whole story. Grab your detective hat and head over to Europe for this next one. Bill was traveling from Paris to Berlin by train. When the train got to Berlin, Bill wasn't on it. His friend reported him missing. The investigation began, and somewhere between Paris and Berlin, they found some interesting clues. There were footsteps that belonged to Bill, and a few feet away, his luggage. A detective found the person who had been sitting next to Bill on the train. His name was Sam. 
He said that Bill didn't have a ticket. When he saw the ticket inspector coming, he decided to make a run for it. He threw his suitcase off the train and then jumped. The detective didn't believe his story and arrested Sam for pushing Bill off the train. Why? Look at the direction the train was going. If Sam's story was true, the suitcase should be behind Bill's footsteps, not in front. Sam pushed Bill off the train, then threw his luggage off after. Mrs. Anderson came home from work in the middle of the day because she'd forgotten some important documents. When she went to the bedroom, she saw her husband lying on the bed. There was a paramedic beside him. Mr. Anderson was unconscious, and the doctor explained that he had been poisoned. Luckily, he had had time to call a paramedic before passing out. Mrs. Anderson immediately blocked off the door and called the police. She said there was a fake paramedic in her house who had poisoned her husband. How did she know? You might have noticed that when Mrs. Anderson arrived, there was no ambulance in the driveway. That's super suspicious. William was hit on the head and taken away. When he woke up, he found himself locked in a small room. He tried to open the door, but obviously it was locked. There was nothing in the room except for a wooden box with 12 bottles in it. There was an extra bottle on the floor next to it. William looked everywhere for the key, but found nothing. After a bit of thinking, he noticed something. He managed to find the key. Where was it? Look at the bottle on the floor. It's exactly the same as the others, but for some reason, it's a bit lower. There must be a fake floor in the box. That's where the key is. Several women went missing in a small city. The police searched for months, but they couldn't find any trace of them. One day, a detective got lucky. He saw a hooded figure who matched their description, followed it, and found the place where they were being kept hostage. But when he busted in, there were just three women. They all said that they had been locked in this small room, but the detective knew that one of them wasn't a victim at all. The first woman said her name was Emery. She had spent around a year in that room. The second woman, Aria, said she had been there about six months. The third woman said her name was Brielle and that she had been locked up in there for about two months. Can you tell who's lying? Emery's lying. Look at her hair. She just had it dyed, but she's been there a year. Aria's hair is also dyed, but you can see her natural dark roots growing out. After years in college, Stephen came back to his hometown. He met up with a couple of his old friends, Dylan and Harry. Both of them said they're successful bloggers now. To prove it, they showed him screenshots from their most popular videos. Steve took a look at them and could tell that one of his friends was lying. Who's lying and how did Steve know? Harry's lying. The number of views for his video is 2.1 million, but the number of likes is way higher, 4.5 million. That's impossible, or at least really, really suspicious. Harry probably photoshopped that screenshot. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, you ready? Oliver was walking near the river in the evening when a group of people dressed in black caught him. All of them were wearing masks. Their leader offered Oliver three options. They could throw the guy into the sea with hungry piranhas. He could choose to end up in the ocean swarming with sharks. Or he could opt for a river with hippos. What should Oliver choose to survive? Piranhas only live in freshwater. The guy should pick the sea with the piranhas. An expedition set up camp in the middle of a desert. They were planning to spend several days in that place. But when they woke up, their truck had disappeared. Luckily, they had enough food to last a week, but no power and little water. 
But there was more to come. Three days later, one of the team members disappeared. The leader of the expedition questioned the remaining people. Michael said he had been wandering around, trying to find water. Emily said she had been playing games on her smartphone. Evelyn claimed they had been sleeping all day long to save energy. And Henry said he had been preparing his research paper in his tent. Now, who's lying? Emily. In three days, her phone would have already run out of battery. There are 100 books on a shelf. To count off 10 of them, you'll need 10 seconds. How much time you'll spend counting off 70 books? It will take you 30 seconds. You'll need this time to count off 30 books, and the remaining ones will add up to 70. Sophia's sister, Chloe, visited her on Saturday. The women had a meal and talked about their lives. Chloe had been promoted. Her husband had recently presented her a diamond ring, and they were going to have a vacation in Hawaii. Chloe didn't have such amazing news. She only listened to her sister and complained about life. Right after lunch, Chloe felt unwell. She paled and lost consciousness. Sophia called an ambulance. They rushed Chloe to a hospital and hardly had enough time to save her life. It turned out the woman had been poisoned. The police came to Sophia to ask her a couple of questions. She was shocked. We ate the same food. I cooked chicken and made a vegetable salad. Nothing exotic. After examining the food, the police officers arrested Sophia for trying to poison her sister. But how did she do it? The poison was in the bottle with the salad dressing. Chloe added some vinaigrette to her dish, while Sophia didn't touch the bottle. The moral? Stop complaining so much. A small cafe in Boston is called Nine Lanterns, but there are only seven lanterns hanging outside. The owner knows about this mistake and can easily correct it, but he doesn't. Why? When the wind took away two lanterns some time ago, the man wanted to replace them. But before he could do it, he noticed that more people started to come into his cafe. They told him two lanterns were missing, and then stayed to drink coffee. Jackson came to visit his friend Aiden, who he hadn't seen in ages. They had a great time, gossiping and drinking tea. But Jackson had completely forgotten Aiden had one quirk. He loved making up riddles and never let anyone leave his house without cracking one or two of his newest ones. This time, his question was, what do you swallow that can swallow you? Can you help Jackson get home? Hey, it's already late. The answer is water. Jackson was smart enough to know he won't be able to leave Aiden's house after just one riddle. True to his expectations, another riddle was waiting for him. What is lower with a head on top than without it? Jackson took his sweet time, but eventually he realized the right answer was a pillow. Could he go home now? Apparently not yet, but Aiden promised it would be the last riddle for the evening. He told his friend, Hannah's birthday is on January 23rd, but she always celebrates it in the summer. Why? Luckily, Jackson had just returned from his trip to Australia. He immediately realized that Hannah lived in the Southern Hemisphere. There, January is the hottest month of the year. Students knew they would have an exam on Friday, but their strict professor didn't tell them the exact time. When one guy gathered enough courage to ask about it, he got a weird reply. If 11 plus 2 equals 1, 10 plus 6 equals 4, 
If you manage to figure out the answer, you won't miss the exam. Do you know when the students should meet with their professor? At 4 p.m. 11 o'clock plus 2 hours is 1 p.m. Then 10 o'clock and 6 hours is 4 p.m. James called his wife Mia and told her he would be at home by 8 o'clock. They didn't plan anything special for that evening. But when he arrived at 2 minutes past 8, the woman was furious. Why was she so angry? Mia thought her husband would come home by 8 p.m., but he appeared at 8.02 a.m. the next morning. Uh Uh-oh. Look at these two ladies. They both seem to be filthy rich, but only one of them actually is. Can you figure out who's fake rich? It's the girl on the left. She's taking a photo with a luxury car in the background. But there's someone in the driver's seat, and this person looks rather shocked. One elderly man could only use a public telephone to make his calls. Once the phone stopped working, the man informed the phone company. He waited and waited, but no one came to fix the phone. Several days later, the man visited the company again and said something. The day after, the phone was working again. What did the man say? He said people use the phone to make calls without paying. Look at this picture attentively. What's wrong with it? The pitcher the woman is holding is empty. Then where's the milk coming from? Mark has always been jealous of his friend Liam's achievements. This week, they're both taking part in a battle of wits. Mark decides to do everything possible to win this time. And the first task is to guess the word. It has seven letters, and it is very heavy. But if Mark takes away two letters, he'll get eight. If he takes away one letter, he'll get 80. What word is it? The first riddle is a success. Mark finds the right word. It's weighty. The next question is even trickier. A man went around the world in a ship, and still, he was always inside of land. How is it possible? It doesn't take Mark long to figure out the man was in a spaceship orbiting Earth. The next thing Mark knows, he's locked in a room. Wow. There are four doors there. He's entered through one of them, and he can't use it again. The first door leads to the room with high-voltage wires hanging above the wet floor. Behind the second door, there's a water-filled room swarming with piranhas. And the third door hides a room where acid, flesh-melting rain is falling from the ceiling. Which door is more or less safe to enter? Mark opted for the first door and didn't regret it. It was safe because he didn't let his body come into contact with the wires and the wet floor at the same time. It turned out the next task was the last one in this competition. Mark was looking forward to finding out the winner, but first he had to do some brain work. The world's tallest tower is finally finished. It took five years to build it. Every next year, the construction doubled in height. How many years did it take the tower to reach half its current height? Four years. If the tower grew twice taller every year, it had to be half of its final height a year before it was completed. And if you're wondering about the results of the competition, it ended in a tie. Duh. 
Luna has two friends, Jack and Owen. On her birthday, the girl wants to go to the movies with the guys. But they don't know each other, and Luna's worried they might feel uncomfortable. But there's also another problem. She spent way too much money this month. But if she invites the guys, she's going to pay. Now, she's trying to understand what is cheaper to invite both guys at the same time, or go to the movies with each of them in turn. Can you help Luna? It'll cost the girl less to invite her two friends at the same time. This way, she'll only have to buy three tickets. If she goes with each of them, she'll pay for four tickets. It was a sunny summer day without a single cloud in the sky. The ship was in the harbor. There were many people on the shore. They gathered there to look at the vessel. Suddenly, the ship started to sink. There was nothing wrong with it, and all of its systems were functioning correctly. The weather was fine, and the sea was calm. But the ship still disappeared in the blink of an eye. What happened? Well, nothing unexpected. Submarines are supposed to travel underwater.